My guest today is Dean Schuster. Dean, how are you, sir? I'm doing great. How are you, David? I'm doing excellent. Tell us what do you do for a living, Dean? Okay, so I am a UX professional. Uh, that means all day, every day, I'm uh, working on digital products, sites, apps, software, and my primary concern is the users and their experience. Uh, UX, and, you know, user UX experience. Is, Correct. Yeah. Now, now, user experience UX is a term that's kind of thrown around a lot. Uh, basically, it means that uh, software design is happening from the perspective uh, and centrality of the user uh, and all of the ways in which we uh, build it, test it, enhance it uh, flows from that. Uh, so the, the very best products out there uh, care an awful lot about user experience. And uh, I'm sure you can Think of a lot of products that you use, a lot of software you use, and some of it is really good. Uh, most of it is really bad. Uh, <laughs> there's lots of reasons for this, um, you know, but user experience is a, is a primary reason why software tends to be frustrating for people, uh, tends to be uh, 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 annoying or low productivity or low efficiency, maddening, all those things. So... As a UX pro, I basically exist uh, to make these frustrations go away. Let's talk about some of those frustrations. What 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 kind of things do you see uh, that are bad user experience, and how do you correct them? Well, David, we only have thirty minutes, so I'm afraid I can't hit up <laughs> on all highlights. bad user experiences. <laughs> um, okay, well, let me give you an example. Um, a good example is login. Yeah. Uh, we're, you know, um, we're talking to an audience of developers, power users, people who know how to use technology, who are comfortable with it, who can handle complexity, uh, who can handle nearly anything thrown at them. And that is not normal. Most people are not like this. Uh, so take... Um, take login, which is a very easy thing that we take completely for granted. Uh, the average person out there, if they have trouble with an app, if they have trouble with software, they have trouble with credentials, they have trouble logging in. Uh, the more novice you get as a person, the more trouble you have with login. Forget about even getting into the product. Uh, okay. uh, I have people who are super novice. They, they have a hard time understanding when they're not logged in versus being logged in. That's how bad it is out there. So the average everyday user, they can do it, they can handle it, but they tend to be seriously frustrated by it. Uh, a dual factor gets them angry. I understand why it's there. It's obviously, you know, security is, is paramount. Uh, but right. but um, most people are dealing with credentials all day, every day. Uh, it frustrates them. Logging in, logging out, uh, authenticating. Uh, most of the errors we see with users are all about getting into apps. Forget about forget about dealing with them every day. And even users who are power users in like in like a, a big corporation, and they got to deal with you know single sign on or whatever. Even they believe uh, they have you know more than typical frustration. Uh, yeah. with this process. So that's just, that's just one. That's just one. Well, well tell me, uh, can you share, uh, like what would be a good login experience? Since this seems to be a really common complaint. Yeah, right. Uh, and, and I know this is going to sound really simplistic, but I, I assure you uh, this, this reflection comes from actually. years uh, of All things of being equal, this, simpler is better. <laughs> when it comes to a user experience, there are very few basic things that people need to know. Uh, when I am first looking at something, let's say it's a login screen, I need to know what can I do? Am I currently yeah. logged in or am I not? Uh, okay. You'd be surprised that that's a serious question for people. If I am yeah. not logged in, how do I do it? What do I need to add to this screen? Uh, is it even clear what something like an ID is? For most people, mm. it is not. Uh, right. So in most cases, you've got to use very plain, direct language. 
Uh, you should tell people if they need to make a password or if they, uh, they've forgotten their password, they've forgotten their username, they've forgotten both. You need to give them a, a lifeline. Uh, when they are inputting something, you've got to let them know what the rules are. You've got to let them know when something goes wrong, what went wrong, what they can do about it. These are, these are really basic things that an awful lot of systems do badly. Mainly because oh, yeah. most developers think, login, got, I got a module for this, done. Now let's build sure. this thing. But on, they don't, they on don't to the next that. problem. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. And that's just one example. That's just a, an easy example of, of bad user experience. Right. It I'm is. Sure that it's a great everyone... example. Yeah, it's a great example. No, but ahead, everything David. you said is not specific to login. You know, let's make it clear what they're but supposed to be doing. Right. Let's provide them feedback. That's let's right. provide, uh, provide them uh it let them know where they stand in terms of logged in versus not logged in. You know, are am I ready to check right. out of the shopping uh, cart or not? I, I know this is uh, this feels silly in many ways, but when, when people are inside an app, they need to know where they are. They need to know where they could go. In most in most cases, they need to know where they sit in a structure or where they've been. What can I do? These are really basic. Um, questions uh, that most software answers very badly. And you'll, you'll notice that the, the best stuff, the best apps and the best software, you never have these questions because they're apparent to you without you doing much thinking. That means someone's thought a great deal about this and made it so that you don't have to think. So if, if you, uh, bad software is typified by me having to stop, pause and think about what's going on. Even if I stop, sure. pause and think for a second, what if I do that five to 10 times? That starts feeling like an unnecessary blocker. And, and that's where friction. that's when people get frustrated. Mm -hmm. That's right. It's a right. mental speed a bump that you have to overcome. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, are you, now, when you're working on projects, are you, are you developing new projects and building in the user experience from the ground up? Or are you fixing broken projects, the, the ones that have already yeah. had user experience? That's a good question. Uh, it's really both of those things. So uh, if someone uh, comes to us and says, we've got, we've got some software that everyone hates, right? All of our feedback is that it's hated and it's hated for these reasons. And, and we know it has something to do with this thing called user experience. I don't understand it, <laughs> but I know that's what people are complaining about. Then they'll bring us in and say, what's wrong? Please tell us what is wrong and how to fix it. So that's sort of a diagnostic. And some of that happens through review. Some of that can happen through testing or observation of users, just clarifying the problem. That's a, that's a big thing people need. It's bad, but why, how? Uh, in other cases, people wanna make something. It's new, right? As you mentioned, from the ground up and they, they, they wanna do it right this time. You know, So we uh, basically work alongside development team in a discovery mode to better understand users. Uh, most teams will tell you they understand who their users are and how they think and what they do and what they want. Uh, but we find that they're often off base or mistaken or don't have it quite right. And often people are building things based on what they want to build or more to the point what stakeholders or leadership think they should build. Uh, mm -hmm. And our job is to help them understand that their idea might not be quite right and to help them understand their users more. And that's something we do from the beginning. So that's, that's sort of envisioning and defining and, and designing and then, and then moving on. Yeah, and you alluded to something earlier that uh, sometimes we build things for the experts that are in our peer group. You know, we, we, yeah, we understand the, the software. <laughs> and so we assume that everybody else thinks like us. Whereas our users, they're, they have a different mindset. They're not computer people. And even if they are, they might have a different okay. mindset. Like uh, right. uh, it's, it's certainly true that uh, most users aren't as expert or knowledgeable or capable uh, or have just lived with this technology their whole lives. They just haven't. So we can't, they don't relate well, right? We're like superheroes to them. Uh, <laughs> I'm but, not sure that's true. But <laughs> well, I mean, we're, we basically have skills that they don't have and they, yeah. and they, and they never will have. Uh, not that that's there's nothing wrong with that, it's just the way it is. But, um, right. But 
there are people who are, say, inside an org, it could be other developers, for crying out loud, okay, uh, who are also experts, who are also power users, who may have a different take on what, what productivity means or a different take on what efficiency means that is different from how we're thinking or how leadership is thinking. Um, let's take this thing, it's off the shelf, let's just you know, jam it in there, it'll be fine. And the users are like, this is not fine. Right, you know, um, I'll live with this, and I'm I'm going to hate it to the North Star every day. Please fix it someday. You know, you get a lot of that, a lot of that. Right? I, I mean, there's there's so much bad software out there. There's just no way I'm going to run out of work. Just no way. <laughs> I, I, uh, I've, I've been guilty of this mindset before. When you said that, it, it came to mind. Uh, I started out as a database guy. Uh, everything I did mm -hmm. started with a database. I was building UIs, but the UIs always looked like the database. You know, I'd have these sure, absolutely. Parent, chi right. parent child grids, for example. Mm -hmm. And I, when, I, when the users were confused, I found myself explaining relational databases to them. You have right. to understand, you right. can't delete this because it has children. What do you mean children? Right. And everyone's like, users. what? David, what, what are you talking about, to, man? What was intuitive to you, me was 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 foreign to them, and I and it was the language. problem was not on their end; it was on my end. I was thinking, I was yeah. I was just assuming everybody thought like me, and I had to get out of that. <laughs> and I and I should uh, add that that's a really hard mindset to change. So I don't, you know, I don't I don't blame anyone who who has that mindset. It's it's really you. hard to shift that, super hard. But once you do. Uh, you know, a whole new world kind of opens up. Uh, so one of the things we do to help people shift in their mindset, uh, I'm thinking of like stakeholders or leaders or even dev leaders or, or developers themselves on teams is we'll just run user tests. We'll say, okay, you all think that this is the problem uh, with your app. That's a good, that's a good hypothesis. Uh, okay. It might even be right. Let's test it. Let's just bring <laughs> some users in and we're going to, we're going to test how they, how they use this thing right now. And that's just sort of like a, a scientific test. Uh, have them go through tasks they normally would with the software, observe and see where the problems are. Um, and you can do that with something that exists to sort of unearth problems, or you could do that with something you've just started out with to see if you're going in the right direction. And so we like to bring developers in to watch these tests. They don't have to administer them. They don't have to, you know, hang out with users and just, and just talk to them all day. Just, just watch, just watch. Mm -hmm. um, and when people see users who can't handle the things they made, uh, they go through like uh, the Kubler-Ross, uh, you know, uh, a series of, uh, uh, of uh, psychological issues with it. You know, first it's denial, you know, um, oh. and they're like, this is not true. This, this person's dumb. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> next, next. And then the next user oh, okay. has the same oh, that's trouble. A, that's called the Kubler-Ross. I didn't know. That's the, I remember the last, this the denial and then something and then anger. It, it, and finally acceptance. acceptance. Yeah, it's how, <laughs> it's how you deal with tragedy or death. First it's denial, okay. then it's bargaining, you know. And, and so uh, basically, after the third or so user has the same problem, it's sort of dawning on everyone that this is the problem. The problem is with yes. the design or the software. And, you know, engineers are, are, are beautiful because they're, they're so intelligent and they, they so want to get things right. And they so understand that they can solve nearly anything if they understand the problem. And so it starts dawning on people that the problem I was solving is not the right problem. And often the fixes to problems are not even that serious. They're just, you know, you're trying to do something different and people couldn't handle it. And after a while, you, you, you accept it, you know, and in and, and, and the Kubler-Ross model, right? Uh, and you see like the fifth user come through and, and you know, in the background behind the one-way glass, the developers, they, they were started out in denial. And now they're like, you can't do it. Go ahead and try. I know you can't, you know, and, and they made it. So I don't have to argue with them anymore about fixing it. They saw it with their own eyes that it needs to be fixed. We don't even have to talk about it. They just fix it. Uh, so, so this is the, the beauty of, of interacting with users and sort of the foundation of user experience. Yeah. Um, yeah, watch, watch someone, watch multiple people misunderstand the software before you say. Yeah, at first no, you think it's maybe, them. Maybe it's like, me. Uh, I think it's <laughs> it me. could be me. <laughs> I won't start with that assumption, but sometimes I end up with that. No, no one starts uh, with that assumption. 
Uh, so uh, this is uh, this is an interesting field that you're in. It's it's it's. I want to I want to call it a niche field. Like uh, there aren't a lot of people yeah, that are focused absolutely. on UX. Is that what you always were? Yeah, did you start out it, as a UX guy or did you transition from something? That's else? a good good question. It is a niche field, right? It's um, it's something that we solely focus on because our job we feel is to be great at it. And the only way you can be great at something is just throw everything at it, right? So it's all we do. Uh, I often uh, describe our company as whatever it isn't. You know, uh, you know, we're not in we're not a development house, even though we we have development shops and we work with developers all day long. Uh, we're not an agency. We're not going to make your logo. We're not going to you know design anything else. We're going to help you make software better. That's it. Higher quality user experience. Anyway. How I got into it, uh, well, I mean, that it, I, I kind of fell into it. Like a lot of people kind of fall into careers. You know, when I, I was going to age myself if, if the hair isn't doing it for you already, but uh, okay. I, you know, I graduated so I'm sure in the you're early younger 90s. I <laughs> <laughs> graduated in the early 90s. And now I, I know was you're wondering, younger than me. <laughs> what on earth will I do? Uh, and in the internet just sort of fell in my lap. I remember uh, the day that a friend of mine, uh, uh, who worked for uh, a large corporation? He said, "You got to come down here. You got to look at this." I'm like, "What?" He said, "Just come down here." And and that, by that, he meant a four hour drive. And so I drive on down to see him, and he takes me into the company, and he sits me in front of a monitor. This is like 1993 or whatever it was, and he, and he says, um, "Look at this." And and I'm looking at the screen, and I see this big globe, and and I'm like, "What is this? This is Microsoft. What is this?" He goes, "No, it is Microsoft." I'm like. What do you mean it's Microsoft? No, it is Microsoft. You know, look, you could like email Bill Gates, right? And uh, and he's <laughs> explaining to me the World Wide Web. And I remember that day thinking, does Apple have one of these? Does, you know, and so we, we, we type, I don't know. And we type and we find it. And and this was my first experience with the web. Uh, and I and immediately thought, this is it. This is going to be a big deal. I mean, it was immediately apparent uh, to everyone. And so we just sort of threw ourselves into that. And, you know, we started a company together and all this. And, um and we were always interested in how people used technology. This is a new thing. How do people use it? How do people interact with it? How do they know what to do? And this was basically the discipline of user experience. I just didn't know it. I didn't even know it was called. And only years later did I realize that's what I've been doing. Uh, so I've just always been fascinated with how people use technology. That's it. Hmm. Uh, and it, and that fascination has led to uh, trying my best to help them you know, deal with technology because technology is, again, for most people in the world, it's really hard to deal with it. Sure. Yeah. It's a necessary evil in some cases. Mm -hmm. Sure. Um, yeah. So now you're, uh, so you're, you're, you're sort of a consulting company, right? You're, what was the name of the yeah, company? Yeah, that's right. Uh, the name of the company is True Matter, uh, T-R-U-E-M-A-T-T-E-R, -T -T -E like real stuff, right? Okay. Uh, and we're in uh, South Carolina in the United States um, uh, and have always been it's always been UX, so it's kind of it's kind of crazy. But you know, like I said, there's uh, there's lots of firms out there that that know they've got problems, uh, and that and that need this skill set or that don't have it. Really, um, UX is kind of young. Uh, so if you, if you look at it in the '90s, it's sort of having its its genesis as we know it today. Uh, that's a fairly young discipline. Uh, I mean, computing itself, programming itself is a fairly young discipline. So my, my niche is still evolving. Uh, and at what I, what I want is for it to evolve more. And I, I want more dev teams to embrace it. And I want more organizations to embrace it. I can see the, you know, the, the positive effects it has. So that's basically why um, I'll do speaking uh, with dev groups, uh, because I'm trying to, I'm trying to help them understand the role user experience has in what they do. It's not a mystery. It's not a black box. It's not just for creative people. Um, it's for them. Uh, and so this is really important to me because I'm trying to grow this sense of what it means to make good digital products. Now, there's lots of ways to do that. I just that, that my way of helping is through user experience. And, and um, uh, where, where user experience and, and development kind of really hit home is another example for you is just performance, right? Uh, we're sort of, uh, dev teams are really focused on speed, how, how fast something is, how, how uh, quickly something loads, how quickly something processes, all, all this sort of stuff, and rightly so. 
because the number one complaint uh, of all users is it's too slow speed. Mm -hmm. So this is where immediately I start talking to developers. We, we understand the problem really well, just from different angles. Um, it, in fact, speed is so much and so often the number one complaint about people. We, we typically, when we're observing people or interviewing them or talking with them, we're kind of looking for what is their number two complaint because we know what number one is. It's slow. Uh, and it has always been so. And maybe someday that won't be the number one complaint, but not yet in this my whole career so far. So, um, so that's a good inroads with dev teams. We're attacking the same problem just uh, from different perspectives at first. Yeah, and I was aware definitely that you are doing a lot of speaking on this because this is how we met us. I, I was sat in yeah, that's right, yeah. at DevSum mm -hmm. in Stockholm yeah. and it was an excellent session. Um, Thank you. But you're also doing uh, a lot of workshops, right? Yeah, uh, we do uh, a lot of training because, um, you know, if you, wanna, if you want your team to start doing user testing, things like that, you just need to learn how to do it. Uh, and so the workshops we do tend to be for small groups of people that uh, are going to work to sort of promulgate that into their organization um, and, and get that going. So we do a lot of that as well. And so there's a lot of different ways uh, that we we're focusing on helping people make better user experiences, uh, you know, training workshops, education is one of them. Uh, but for the most part, it's consulting and then actual uh, work we do to do definition and design and all that stuff. We're basically a shop that uh, has powerful expertise all the way through front end. Uh, and we have strong back end folks, but really we're partnering with back end developers all the time. Right. Uh, usually the teams we're working with have strong development resources, but they can't leverage those resources into something, you know, amazingly, wonderfully usable. Uh, and so we're brought in to help make that happen that totally or to help them I mean, think about their team. Like there are many times where I, I'll talk to a company and say, you're trying to grow a UX team. I can help you do that. I know based on your organization, the first type of person you should be hiring. Let's talk about it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Um, awesome. Empowering them to do what you're doing them for them. Um, you, you, uh, you mentioned earlier about getting users to actually test your software and find out where yeah, their, yeah. their pain points are. Um, it's fun. Not every development shop has access to users, though. Is that what, what Yeah, that's that super that? unfortunate. Just, <laughs> yeah, I mean, a lot, there's a yeah. lot of developers that are just one, one person mm -hmm. shop and, uh, or one, it, one person. It's IT a department. frustration for, for, for sure. Uh, and it's one of the most common questions I get, which is, uh, I love this, but what if they won't let me talk to users? And, and so the, 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 that is a systemic fundamental problem in an org. If, if you're not having a development team, which is a, you know, that's a diverse team. They're not just the developer itself. So you've got lots of people there. You've got business analysts, you've got architects, you've got developers, you've got dev leads, you've got product owners, all those people. And if, and if you're insulated from users, you are at a major disadvantage. That means you're basically guessing and your guesses may be excellent, right? Your guesses may be, Maybe. we're very smart. We know our industry. We know our product. Uh, we have, we have these customer wish lists, you know, uh, all this sort of stuff. Um, but, uh, the next step is access to users. Now, if, if you don't have that, so. What do I say? L let, me, let me say how I first dealt with this problem myself. Um, and if we were working on a, on a project, this is way back now, okay? And, and, and the idea of talking with users was just very weird to people. So we couldn't, always, we couldn't always do it if we were making something. So we just decided to do it anyway. You know, uh, we decided... Uh, we're going to find your users. We're going to figure out how to observe them. We're going to figure out how to test them. And we're just going to sort this thing out. Uh, we're not going to ask for permission. Uh, we're just going to try it. And if it works really great, we won't need forgiveness. You will love it. Uh, so, and, and that's basically how we sort of started to build that practice ourselves. So I would say the same thing to developers today. Just because someone says you can't talk to users or, 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 or that's not what we do, or, uh, well, sure, we have, I gave you the customer wish list, 
as if that somehow equals what a user wants or needs. Almost never does, by the way. Um, <laughs> I would encourage uh, a developer to try to find users anyway, to try to go watch what they do anyway. Uh, call it learning and growth if you got a learning and growth budget uh, that, that you could apply your time to. And, I've, and I have seen developers do this. Uh, and I have seen them actually start to grow interest in their team. So the answer is simple, although it's hard to do. Easy to say, hard to do. Uh, just start doing it no matter what people are saying because the value is so strong in observing users that people will ultimately see it. Uh, so that's a, that's a tough thing to say to people. The, the other thing I say is, well, there are many organizations out there that care about users and that will let you interact with users. Find one of those. That's the other thing I might mm. say to them. Maybe you're in the wrong place. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we are almost at time here. Uh, where can people go to learn more on this topic? Well, uh, fortunately, we have uh, uh, the benefit of Google these days, and uh, we're in a golden age of content and learning. Yeah. And, and, uh, and, Bing. You, <laughs> and Bing. Uh, the, uh, and chat, GPT, whatever, right? We're just, uh, it'd be hard for you to not learn uh, these days. You know, uh, back in the day, we would, uh, when I first started, there was, what do we have? Yahoo. I remember when that started, you know, we had nothing. <laughs> Me too. And, um, Alta Vista, uh, web crawler. Yeah, that's right. Alta Vista, Ask Jeeves, Google came out. We're like, what is this? <laughs> you know, uh, but now you can do anything. You could literally just sort of start searching. How do I learn about user experience? I'm a developer. And you will have a wealth of resources uh, in front of your face. Uh, but I would, if you're just interested, and by the way, I think, even if a developer is just interested in user experience, that's enough to make you a stronger developer uh, in terms of interacting with, with teams that have UX people on it. Just the interest to learn more about it. Uh, so um, you could try uh, a great book is um, uh, the, the Design of Everyday Things. That's like the, the first book anyone should read if they wanna, mm. if they wanna read uh, and learn about UX. That's Don Norman's book. Everyone in UX knows about it, but it's a fascinating and interesting book uh, that basically outlines what, what it means, what is user experience anyway? And you start thinking about experiences people have with lots of things, not just screens like we've come to think about, but physical objects or, mm -hmm. uh, or um, uh, how you encounter um, you know, a, a retail experience or, or, or whatever, or how you, sure. you unbox and figure out how to install a sprinkler system. That's an experience. Someone had to design it, um, yeah. things like that. I would say cool. that I would add to that uh, one more thing, David. I know we're about at time, but one of the biggest complaints I get uh, from developers is that people who are non-developers, sort of like folks in the humanities, so you think of the writers, maybe the UX people, the designers, whomever, they don't know anything about development. And they don't know anything about databases and they don't know anything about programming and they don't know anything about logic and they don't know yeah. anything about how hard it is to do this stuff. And they don't care. I just wish they would, and they don't care, right? I just wish they would know a little bit just so we could talk, right? And I get that yeah. a lot. And so my advice to all those people on the humanity side is you've got to learn more about this because you have to be able to talk to developers. The same is true in the opposite. Uh, if right. you want to be a better developer, learn a little bit about user experience. You don't have to become a designer. You don't have to become a UX person. But if you're able to talk at the same table and get the respect of other people at the table, man, you can make great things. Uh, and you'll make great friends and you know grow your career and all that. That's a good note to end on. Thank you so much, Dean. This has been educational. Thanks so much. It's good to see you, David. Some of my best friends are technology freaks, and I love them for it.